Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, depending on which part of the world you're joining us from today. Information Management Group welcomes you to the webinar on SQL Server 2012. This is the fourth webinar in its series, focusing today on SQL Server availability features and SQL Server appliances. My name is Saranjan Som and I lead the Business Intelligence Practice at Information Management Group. Look, quick look at the agenda. Uh, who is IM Group? SQL Server, the always on features or the availability features within SQL, SQL Server 2012 especially. And a quick look at SQL Server appliances or what we know as the data warehouse in a box. So who is IM Group? Well, we provide strategies, services and solutions for collaboration, engagement and information management, helping our customers to transform the performance of their organizations. In other words, we provide the entire spectrum of information management, starting from business intelligence, that would uh, encompass information strategy, data warehousing, mass data management, data quality, data integration, data mining, reporting, analytics, performance management, onto SharePoint and creative services around portals, intranets, document management systems, content management systems, and uh, enterprise search, onto uh, CRM and XRM, and that would include uh, contact management systems, campaign management systems, sales and marketing systems, as well as uh, the next generation of CRM or XRM as we know it today. Underpinning all these three practices, uh, we have a, an offering around, uh, of course, the on-premise uh, aspect of delivery, but we also offer uh, an option today of providing all these services across the cloud via our cloud services, as well as uh, provide ongoing and post-implementation support through our managed services division. A little bit about what the industry has to say about Information Management Group. Well, um, IM Group has been the Microsoft Global Partner of the Year uh, award winner in business intelligence uh, four years in a row, starting with the year 2005, 6, 7 and 8. And uh, we were the finalists uh, fifth year around in 2009. We are a premium gold certified partner with about 11 recognized co competencies and we're also recognized by Gartner as uh, one of the key uh, in UK based independent companies in the information management sector. We're also part of the Microsoft's Partner Advisory Council which uh, does give us a lot of insight into the products that Microsoft is planning to deliver uh, in the future and, and its roadmap. So a quick overview of uh, SQL Server 2012. In the last three series of our webinar, you've already uh, seen a lot of SQL Server 2012 around uh, data visualization, around performance, uh, and also around data quality and uh, mass data management. Uh, today, we'll be focusing on the mission-critical uh, confidence of SQL Server and how SQL Server provides you with all the required nines of uh, data protection and uh, performance uptime with its always-on features. So, going into the availability features of SQL Server, uh, primarily the, the, the new features within SQL Server 2012 that will provide us with the um, uh, high availability features uh, include the always on functionality. So always on uh, functionality today is available uh, around two main areas. Uh, there's a functionality called always on groups which has primarily been built on uh, database mirroring and uh, it, it allows automatic and manual failover of databases and it supports up to four secondaries and we'll see later on how that can actually provide us uh, much more improved data protection. It also allows you fast application failover and automatic page repair. Uh, the always on failover cluster instances uh, feature all, uh, also uh, uh, well built on the database failover clustering uh, feature uh, now provides multi-site clustering across subnets and what this means is now you can actually enable cross data center failover uh, across databases. Of course uh, SQL Server 2012 uh, still builds on uh, it, the core um, high availability features of SQL Server including peer-to-peer -peer replication and database mirroring. 
In terms of planned uptime uh, or planned or re increasing planned uptime and reducing planned downtime, SQL Server also provides uh, a, a number of uh, features and functionalities which will uh, hopefully reduce the amount of downtime uh, going forward. Uh, SQL Server 2012 for the first time supports uh, Windows Server Core. Uh, what that means is uh, Windows Server Core is the cut down version of Windows Server with uh, a fully uh, console based uh, Windows uh, operating system. In other words, it doesn't require the GUI to run. Now, what that implies is uh, a majority of the patches that are required on Windows Server, therefore, uh, are eliminated and, and, and minimized so that you only need to run the patching for uh, very um, rare console only. Uh, OS uh, requirements and, and effectively what that means is it gives you a much more reduced start downtime as you don't have to touch the GUI part of the Windows Server at all. Uh, what SQL Server 2012 also will provide you with with, with is uh, online operations of a number of uh, tasks which were only possible earlier on as uh, offline operations. So therefore, these uh, with the new version of SQL Server, you'll actually be able to. Uh, do tasks like rebuild uh, indexes and rebuild uh, data structures across uh, uh, large uh, data st well da data stores of large objects uh, online, and therefore once again reducing the amount of planned downtime that you would have probably earlier not been able to avoid. SQL Server will also allow you to uh, actually apply rolling upgrades and patching, again improving. Uh, the amount of uh, uptime on the system and it will also provide live migration uh, with SQL on Hyper-V. In terms of managing the overall uh, system, uh, SQL Server 2012 also comes with a number of advisors and wizards, in, uh, wizards including database recovery advisors, configuration wizards. It also provides the, uh, uh, the very powerful Windows PowerShell. Uh, it also integrates uh, into the System View Dashboard and System Center, and it also provides active secondaries. Uh, what this implies is uh, if, if, if there is uh, a, a non-critical requirement, let's say, to run reports off the main database, you could potentially run these off the active secondaries and therefore harness the extra idle power that's uh, available within the server farm. Coming now to the uh, third part of our webinar about SQL Server appliances, or in other words, data warehouse in a box. It's not quite a data warehouse in a box, uh, it, uh, as a lot of people kind of might understand. So for, for those out there who are kind of uh, from a services or a consulting background and, and think that Microsoft is actually going to introduce a data warehouse out of the box, well, it's still... Uh, the data warehouse itself still needs to be built. You still need to design your fact tables, your dimension tables, your ETL routines. What a data warehouse out of the box means is it is the hardware solution out of the box, available out of the box, the hardware and the, and the core SQL software available out of the box. So in terms of the number of available solutions uh, out there today, uh, SQL Server 2008 R2 as well as SQL Server 20, 2012 uh, as a standalone uh, SQL Server uh, still is available out there. If 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 you have uh, internal capacity and the capability, uh, you are still, of course, most welcome to run SQL Server uh, on tried and tested hardware. And this is particularly true for large organisations where um, there is already a huge infrastructure team and uh, there there are corporate builds of servers within the organisation, and you can reuse uh, all of that at the moment and use SQL Server as it is out of the box. Go, moving uh, slightly away from that paradigm which, is, which has been the traditional paradigm, uh, the first step towards uh, uh, data warehouse out of the box is the fast track reference architecture. Now this is still a, a SQL Server solution, uh, a hardware and software based SQL Server solution that is uh, running on a pre-built, customized uh, SQL Server box. Uh, the only difference is that th the fast track reference architecture allows for a highly tuned uh, environment where uh, the entire hardware, starting from the SAN, the I/O subsystem, the fibers, uh, the uh, 
the way the, data, the, the database files are laid out, the way the memory um, is utilized within the server. Everything is tuned, uh, pre-tuned and available uh, for a data warehouse type workload. And um, this solution architecture or the reference architecture is known as the uh, fast track uh, warehouse uh, reference architecture. And we'll uh, we'll look into the reference architect fast track ar architecture in a couple of slides from now. A and of course, at the other end of the spectrum, Microsoft uh, today provides you with the, uh, the with the full fledged appliance architecture, uh, which is a um, MPP or a massively parallel processing data warehousing solution which uh, provides you with petabytes of uh, information running off uh, the server racks and we'll go into that in, in a couple of slides from now. In addition to uh, um, those uh, standard three architectures, um, Microsoft today also provides you uh, with another data warehouse out of the box, which at, at a much lower lower end of the scale. Uh, this is uh, called the Business Data Warehouse Appliance. It's it's a pre-configured hardware, software, and services uh, option that is available from Microsoft, and it comes pre-built with SQL Server. It comes pre-built with five terabytes of data for uh, data warehouses and is, and is compliant with the fast track 3.0 uh, reference architecture paradigm. Talking about the appliance range once again, uh, primarily we are looking at a number of options that are available today. On the left hand side of your screen, uh, what, what, what you see is uh, different uh, server configurations within the fast track reference architecture. So it starts off with about a, small, a very small capacity of 5 terabytes and then moves on to 20 terabytes, 40 terabytes, and 80 terabytes with uh, uh, a commensurate amount of uh, RAM and processing power. Um, and then, of course, moving on from the uh, SMP architecture on the left, on the right we have the Enterprise Data Warehouse uh, device or the uh, Microsoft SQL Server Parallel Data Warehouse device. And this divide provi this device provides you with a rack-based architecture with about uh, 120 active cores at a minimum and would scale up to about 500 terabytes of, uh, of data. Uh, once again, taking a, a deeper look at uh, what the fast track uh, appliance looks like, um, it, it just clarifies once again that although uh, the fast track um, architecture is kind of built as a, it's built as a uh, data warehouse out of the box, it, it doesn't necessarily provide you with some of the other things that are complementary to a data warehouse. So you still need. Uh, servers and boxes to run your integration services ETL. You still need separate uh, servers to prov to run analysis services cubes uh, and and do your uh, reporting analytics or uh, SharePoint based uh, dashboarding. Uh, the uh, fast track box itself primarily uh, consists of the area in white, which uh, essentially is the the SAN, the storage array, uh, the data path. Uh, the data, core data warehouse itself and the subject matter, uh, subject area data marts. And of course, uh, in terms of the parallel data warehouse, uh, it, as far as the parallel data warehouse is concerned, uh, we are looking at a truly parallel MPP architecture where uh, on, on the left hand side you have a control rack, uh, a control rack that uh, consists of a number of control nodes which will. Uh, if, which will initially pick up the uh, the workload, uh, which is which which uh, the server has been uh, tasked with. It could either be uh, loading in data or running massively parallel queries out of the database, and then distribute uh, the workload onto the numerous data racks that uh, you see on the right. Uh, at a minimum, uh, it would have at least ten, uh, at, at least eight data racks on on, on the data side, and. Uh, the picture on the screen will give you uh, a rough idea of uh, how that architecture is laid out. And as you can see, um, you've got the various tiers within the control rack itself. Uh, 
starting with the control nodes, the management servers, the landing zone and the backup node. Uh, you have a dual InfiniBand uh, private network uh, that is communicating with the various uh, database servers or the store uh, and the storage nodes, the storage nodes and uh, it, it is based on um, a shared nothing architecture therefore each uh, database server has its own storage node that node has its own memory and its own uh, instance of SQL server running and uh, the way in which uh, the, the configuration achieves uh, the massively uh, performance speeds is uh, on, on the basis of uh, uh, splitting out the workloads into massively parallel tasks so if, if you're either loading in data into, into the uh, into, into the server environment uh, the control nodes will split out the data into these multiple uh, database nodes or if you're running a query which can be parallelized across those multiple nodes then the, the control node will actually try to do that and then uh, service the results back through the uh, InfiniBand uh, architecture Well, that's that's about it from now. If you have any questions, any comments, uh, do send in your uh, emails to events at, at imgroup.com. Uh, it's been great uh, bringing this uh, series uh, to you. Uh, we hope to catch up with you once again sometime shortly in the future. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.